Hi everyone, welcome back to another chapter which is called Heat and uh, I'm Anushka and I'll be helping you understand this chapter called Heat. So um, let's get to it. So then uh, let's start with this uh, thing called matter. So now matter is anything that has mass and occupies space. So that is the definition. So matter is something which can which whose weight you can calculate who, uh, who with which you can be, uh, find out how heavy it is and which has some space which occupies some space so for example the things in our house and the flower pot for uh, glass spoon uh, bed sheet clothes uh, water oil then gas cylinder all of these are matter anything anything that has mass and occupies space if you can find out how heavy something is for example let's take an example of a pencil so now how heavy is a pencil you can measure that so it has mass and you need some space to keep it somewhere and if you have to keep it in a pouch or in a cupboard or in a pencil stand it needs some space right so that means it occupies space which means pencil is matter so like that anything which has mass and occupies space is called matter so um, for matter to be present it should have mass and space so now uh, last uh, in the last video in my last video that is nutrition in plants i told you about cells so i told you that if a living organism or a living thing is a uh, puzzle then the pieces that make up the puzzle are cells so hangene if uh, let's say matter is a puzzle so if matter is a puzzle uh, the pieces the pieces that make up matter are called molecules so in li living organisms it is cells matter it is molecule so um, the building blocks of matter are called molecules are humans matter yes we are humans are living things and they are also matter because we we have mass and we occupy space are animals matter yes animals are also matter animals are living organisms and they occupy space which means they are made up of molecules and cells so the molecules make up cells and cells make up the living organism okay so now matter exists in three forms solid liquid and gas so solid so if you see look in the first picture um, we uh, the blue dots over there are the molecules so now in a solid the molecules are very close to each other they're tightly packed so now um, for example uh, if you try to uh, if you look at your clothes they are in a proper shape and the other shape change so if it is uh, let's say size 32 and it will be size 32 forever it will never grow or it will never become smaller why because it is a solid because the molecules are tightly packed next to each other so you cannot make it bigger or smaller then comes liquid liquid is where that if you look at the second picture you can see liquids so liquids are uh, are uh, a form of matter where there is a little space between the molecules so for example water oil um, then fruit juice all of these are liquids so now uh, if you see uh, you can pour water but can you pour clothes and the water and now you can transfer it from one cup to another but uh, by pouring it and if you hold it at, uh, if you hold the first cup at some height and you pour the water then the water is going to fall it is going to pour but can you do that with solids no you cannot pour solids why because there is no space for the molecules in solids to move whereas in liquids if you see there is some space so the molecules can move around then the third we have gas so now um gases are uh, the form of matter where there is a lot of space between the molecules so the molecules can move around easily for example air or the um, gas in cylinder and uh, cooking adige uh, the cylinder that we use it has gas in it so gases are uh, uh, a gas is a form of matter where there is a lot of space between the molecules so now uh, let's get to the main part of the chapter so I will tell you an experiment and you can try this out at home. So what you can do is um, take 
ತ್ರೀ ಮಗ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಬೀಕರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕಂಟೈನರ್ಸ್ ಅಂದರೆ ತ್ರೀ ಪಾತ್ರೆ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ್ಯಾಮ್ ಯು ಫಿಲ್ ವೆರಿ ಕೋಲ್ಡ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಅಂದರೆ ಐಸ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಇರುತ್ತಲ್ವ ಹಾಗೆ ಯು ಫಿಲ್ ವೆರಿ ಕೋಲ್ಡ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ವನ್ ಯು ಫಿಲ್ ವೆರಿ ಹಾಟ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಅಂದರೆ ಹೀಟ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಮಾಡಿರುವ ವಾಟರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ರೂಮ್ ಟೆಂಪ್ರೇಚರ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಹಾಟ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಅಂದರೆ ನಾಟ್ ಬಾಯ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಹಾಟ್ ವಾಟರ್ ನಾಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಹಾಟ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಅ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಹಾಟ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಅಂದರೆ ಸ್ನಾನ ಮಾಡುವ ಮಾಡೋಕ್ಕೆ ದ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಹಾಟ್ ವಾಟರ್ ವಿ ಯೂಸ್ ಹಾಗೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಒನ್ ಯು ಟೇಕ್ ರೂಮ್ ಟೆಂಪ್ರೇಚರ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಅಂದರೆ ನಾರ್ಮಲ್ ವಾಟರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಕೋಲ್ಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಹಾಟ್ ಸೊ ನಾವು Uh, put your left hand in cold water in the tub containing cold water so when you put your hand in that you can obviously feel that it is cold then put your right hand in the tub containing hot water so this is the tub containing hot water and that's the tub containing cold water so you put your right hand in the tub containing the hot water you will obviously feel hot now if you take both your hands out from the beakers and put them in the temperature we use this thing called temperature so temperature is a measure of how hot or cold something is so when you say that the temperature of um, tea or chaha is um, let's say 30 degrees celsius which means that the temp- uh, that uh, that's how hot tea is whereas if you say the ice is at 0 degrees celsius which means that the ice is very cold compared to tea it is cold and it is at 0 degree celsius so now the units to measure temperature are degree celsius and degree fahrenheit so now we if we go to a vegetable market early if we have to buy tomatoes or onions we say yes to kg uh, yes to kg bake one the kill tare so that time we say one kg or two kg or three kg so that way to measure um, weight we use the uh, uh, the unit kg but to measure the same the same way that to you uh, to measure temperature we use the units degree celsius and degree fahrenheit so now we have three types of temp- uh, thermometers so a temperature i told you is the uh, is how we measure so- how hot something uh, how hot or cold something is so now how are you going to do that we use a machine or a device called thermometer thermometer So now there are three types of thermometers. One is laboratory thermometer. So laboratory thermometer, as you can see, it is very, very long. And the red end that you see, that is called the bulb. B-U-L-B, bulb. It is very, very long. It is used in labs. Labs under science lab, under chemistry lab, bio lab, physics lab only. To, uh, for, to perform experiments, they use this kind of thermometer. Then we have clinical thermometer. So clinical thermometer is very small compared to the laboratory thermometer. Clinical thermometer is used by doctors. So what do you do? You need to find out how hot your body is, right? To find out the temperature, you use a clinical thermometer. Doctors, nurses and humans, I mean people who live in houses, they use clinical thermometer. So now um, clinical thermometer has something called a kink. kink do you see that 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 tiny bulb is the kink so now uh, kink is uh, why do we need a kink in a thermometer so what so when you measure your temperature your body temperature with a clinical thermometer the mercury level in it should not fall down suddenly and then once you finish measuring it shouldn't go down suddenly you should be able to read it right so uh, to make sure that the mercury does not fall down easily we have the kink so now what is mercury mercury is not the planet that i'm talking about mercury is a metal so just like we have copper aluminium iron and all we have another metal called mercury so mercury is what is there in most thermometers and if you look at cl- clinical thermometer or laboratory thermometer the uh, thing the silver thing that moves which you can see is called the mercury it's the metal so when uh, when something is when you put when you put the thermometer in something hot then the mercury level will go up as in the mercury will travel upwards but when you put the th- uh, thermometer in a cold thing like ice the mercury level will come down then the third type is digital thermometer in digital thermometer there is no mercury why is there no mercury because mercury is a harmful metal it is not good for our health so that's why if the thermometer breaks then the mercury might spill 
and that is not a good thing people might touch it or people might eat it by mistake babies might eat it so that is not safe mercury is not good for human health so that's why we use digital thermometers digital thermometer only there is no mercury and it is completely digital you don't have to um, wait for the mercury level to rise or drop or anything it has no mercury and it is uh, it, it is purely a machine um so uh, i explained few things uh, to you guys in this, uh, in the previous slide so i will explain few more things in this slide just to make it all clear to you so here we are going to discuss the parts of the thermometer just the basic parts so uh, the one that i've circled over here the purple circle that part is called the bulb so the bulb is what takes the temperature so if you put uh, so if you hold the bulb to something hot or cold then that is how you will be able to read it if you don't hold the bulb to it then you won't get the temperature then the orange uh, arrow over here shows us the scale in degree celsius so do you see uh, dot c written in the end so that means the scale is in degree celsius so if you want to read the temperature in degree celsius then you should follow these numbers similarly the lower scale the scale is what has the numbers on it so the blue the blue arrow will show you the scale in fahrenheit or degree fahrenheit so do you see the dot and f in the end so that shows us that the scale is in degree fahrenheit so now um, let me tell you about the precautions we need to take while measuring temperature or um, so one thing is when you're measuring body temperature the mercury level should be below 35 degrees celsius so if you can see in this temperature that i have over here the mercury level is below 35 degrees celsius as in the uh, the yellow the yellow part is way more as in so the red part here is the mercury so the red is little below as in little to the left of 35 degrees celsius so you should measure temperature only when the temperature is below 35 degrees celsius in a thermometer then second you have to give the uh, give the thermometer few jerks and then you have to move it like that just the way you saw in the animation in this animation you have to move the mercury uh, you have to move the thermometer a few times so that the mercury level goes below 35 degrees celsius if you don't do that then you will get wrong reading then third you should never hold the bulb of the thermometer bulb andre i told you it's the end the silver end or the red end is called the bulb you should never hold that while you are reading the temperature you should always hold the other end so in this picture you can see that this person is holding the other end he is not holding the bulb you should never hold the bulb while measuring temperature or while reading temperature because the thermometer might absorb the heat in your body because humans are also hot as in the normal human body temperature is 37 degrees celsius so um if you uh, if you want to check the temperature of ice and you uh, hold the bulb of the thermometer while reading it then the thermometer is going to also measure how hot you are so then it will give you the wrong reading so that's why you should always hold the thermometer at the other end not the bulb you should never hold the bulb of the thermometer and you should handle the thermometer with care the thermometer uh, clinical and laboratory thermometers are usually made of glass so glass idre adu murdogibidutte it can fall and break so it, we should make sure that that doesn't happen so you should be careful with it and fourth is you need to clean the bulb of the thermometer with alcohol or with an antiseptic solution so under dettol or savlon tara you uh, or a tincture you have to use that to clean the bulb of the thermometer before and after checking the temperature of a thing so now if i i have fever and you check my temperature and then you check the temperature of another person who doesn't have fever then the germs in me can also go to the other person so to avoid that you should always um clean the bulb of the thermometer with antiseptic solution like dettol savlon alcohol okay so now uh, let me tell you again bulb is the end of the thermometer which with which you check the temperature so uh, the red end or the silver end that you can see is called the bulb 
so that is what you're not supposed to hold that is what will measure the temperature it will absorb it will record how hot or cold something is so now this is uh, these are the precautions to uh, which you are supposed to take before uh, measuring temperature with a clinical thermometer so i told you clinical thermometer is used by doctors so before you um, check the uh, use this thermometer to check the temperature you are supposed to make sure that you have done all these things which is you have to make sure that the uh, temperature level is below 35 degree celsius if it is not below 35 degree celsius you have to give it few jerks or you have to shake it so that the mercury falls below 35 degree celsius then while reading the temperature you are always supposed to hold the other end of the thermometer and never hold the bulb and fourth you have to always clean the bulb of the thermometer with alcohol or antiseptic solution before you use it and after you use it then let's talk about laboratory thermometer so laboratory thermometer go you have to do the same thing that is um, clean it with uh, antiseptic solution give it few jerks so that it, the mercury level falls and you shouldn't hold the bulb and all and apart from that when you are uh, recording the temperature you are supposed to keep it still and upright and if you can see in the picture it is one straight standing line it shouldn't be slant it has to be straight and still then second as you can see the bulb of the thermometer over here is red in color so when uh, if you're uh, for example checking the temperature of water then you have to make sure that the entire bulb is inside the water it shouldn't be that the bulb is a, is on the water surface it shouldn't uh, the uh, water should surround the bulb from all sides and the bulb should be inside the water it shouldn't be on the water or below the water below the water surface it has to be inside the water which means uh, water should surround the bulb so now how do we read the th uh, read temperature um, so now I'm going to teach you how to read the te uh, the temperature on a thermometer so um, three, uh, we need to keep two things in mind first one is we should never hold the temperature uh, the thermometer at the bulb while record while reading the temperature because if you do that then the thermometer is going to take in your uh, is going to also measure how hot or cold you are and that's and that will give you the wrong reading second thing is we need to keep the thermometer at eye level so eye level and kandin munde exactly kandin munde a thermometer it beko hang maadidre correct reading perfect reading barutte a uh, thermometer na mele kelage side alli ittre it is going to give you a wrong reading so eye level andre kannin munde exactly kannin munde so in the picture you can see that the thermometer is kept in just in front of the boy's eyes so that way he will get the perfect temperature the perfect reading then uh, now let's talk about transfer of heat so now i told you how how we can find out how hot or cold a body is that is by using a thermometer and by using the quantity temperature and the units degree celsius and degree fahrenheit so now how does heat move so we shall find that out so then uh, here is an experiment so we have two bricks and between the bricks we have a metal scale a metal scale um, you have to take a metal scale for this and at one end we can see that there is a candle so because there is the candle the scale will start becoming hot so uh, these yellow circles that you can see that is nothing but wax wax is what we have stuck to the scale so as the scale becomes hot you will see this the wax will melt and fall down and why is that because the scale becomes hot and as the scale becomes hot the wax melts and it will fall down so now let's learn in detail about the transfer of heat okay so now i'm going to tell you about a very interesting fact so um here i have ice cube and uh, a cube of ice and i have fire so what will happen if you keep both in contact as in next to each other if you keep both of them together the ice is going to melt so a very important point that i'm going to tell you over here is that when hot when a hot body and cold body are kept next to each other then the hot body will become cooler and the cold body will become warmer 
because the he the heat is going to move from the hot body to the cold body so the cold body will start becoming hotter and since the hot body is uh, losing heat as in it is giving heat to the cold body the co uh, the hot body will become cooler and the cold body will become warmer so till the hot body and the cold body are of the same temperature this is going to happen so when you keep a hot body and a cold body next to each other the temp uh, the hot body is going to become cooler and the cold body is become going to become warmer and this will happen till the hot body and the cold body are have the same temperature so now uh, this is the main concept of transfer of heat so uh, transfer of heat occurs in three form one is conduction so conduction occurs only in solids so that is when the heat is transferred from molecule to molecule so this is a solid as i'd shown you in one of the earlier pictures and the heat is going to move in the direction of the black arrows so one molecule is going to pass on the heat to the other molecule and the, the second molecule to the third molecule third mo molecule to the fourth molecule that is how the heat is going to pass and that is how the body is going to become hot so now conductors are substances which easily allow heat to pass through them so this is a very important point and you should all keep this in mind they are also called good conductors of heat so conductors are substances which allow heat to easily pass through them which means they easily become hot so for example copper copper is going to easily become hot you keep it on uh, uh, near some fire and it is going to become hot in no time so which means it is a conductor insulator is a substance which does not heat up very fast or which does not allow heat to pass through it easily it is also called poor conductor of heat which means it is not going to become hot very easily for example air water plastic they don't become hot very easily it takes a lot of time for them comparatively so conductors examples we have copper the second picture we have uh, steel these are good conductors of heat and then we have the insulators that is plastic and water so conductors are things that to easily understand conductors are uh, things which become hot easily insulators are things which do not become hot easily they need some time so why does it happen only in solids why does conduction take place only in solids i've told you in you can read the point over here clearly which says occurs only in solids why does conduction happen only in solids why can't it happen in liquids and gases so let's see that so as i told you in liquids uh, there is some space between the molecules so even if the heat has to pass from molecule to molecule because there is some space the heat will be lost in the space the other molecule will not be able to catch that heat in the same way gases so there is a lot of uh, a distance or a lot of space between the molecules so since there is so much distance as you can see in the black arrows the heat is going to escape in the space that that is the other molecule won't be able to catch it easily that's why conduction cannot easily happen in liquids and gases the, the main reason is because the molecules won't be able to catch the heat from the previous molecule it is going to be the heat is going to be lost so now let's move on to the second type convection convection is when heat is transferred by the movement of molecules themselves so occurs in liquids and gases only so this cannot happen in Uh, solid so we will get to that again so examples will be smoke and air heating of water and heating of air so i am going to help you understand this better so if you see in this picture uh, where there is a burner there is a flame and there is a pot you can see that there are few arrows which means when the water in or when the substance in this pot is heated that time the arrows in the bottom of the container that will become hot first correct it is nearer to the fire so it will easily become hot so since anything which is hot is light anything which is cold is heavy so uh, since the water uh, since these molecules are light they will move up correct uh, if you take a balloon with air and a balloon with no air the balloon with air is going to fly so same way the molecules near which are hot are going to go up so since they uh, they go up because they rise up because they are hot so the cold molecules at the top will come down so now when the cold molecules come down they will become hot so now they will move up again then the molecules at the top which were which have now become cold they will come down so they will become hot so there is like a cycle so and the molecule will become hot it will go up they, uh, there it will become cold and it will come down it will become heavy and it will come down back and it will become hot again so it will rise up 
so that is convection so if you see the molecules are moving themselves the molecules are moving so they become hot they move up they become cold they move down so the molecules over here are moving so that is called convection then um, there is an experiment over here which you can try so you have to take a candle and keep your hands uh, in such a way that one of your hands is above the flame and one is nearer to the flame so now when you uh, if you see the um, the hand which is above the candle at a, at more distance as in the one which is far farther away from the candle that will take more time to feel the heat and the uh, candle hatra irua hand that will be get, that will get heated faster the other hand will take a little time to get heated up why because the mo here the molecules are moving so when when you consider the hand near the candle alli distance is not that much so the molecules can move faster but if you consider the a hand above the candle at more distance the molecule since the molecules have to move they will take some time so that is why you will feel uh, heat over there um, uh, a little later so now let's see why convection cannot take place in solids so now if you um, see this picture it is from another previous slide this is a solid and i told you in the beginning only that there is very little space between the solids and that is why they cannot uh, there is very little space between the molecules in a solid that's why the molecules cannot move and for convection what do we need we we want the molecules to move around correct only if the molecules move convection will happen if the molecule molecules don't move then there will be no conv convection so in a solid if you see there is very less space for the molecules to move around and since the molecules cannot move around no convection will take place so that is the simple logic here now let's talk about radiation so before i get to radiation let me tell you a very very interesting fact the fact is that um there are no molecules in space which means but uh, on earth we have molecules obviously we have solids liquids gases but in space there is no there are no molecules there is nothing over there there are no molecules as in there are ob there obviously are other planets stars meteors satellites moons and all of that but there is there are no molecules in space as in the black part in space that has no molecules so how does heat travel that way so in conduction we learned that the heat travels when the molecules are next to each other convection we learned that the molecules have to move so do you think molecules uh do you think heat is transferred through convection in space do you think the molecules can move that is not possible because the distance between the earth and the sun is so much that that while the molecules move from the sun to earth they'll probably get lost or they can't even move actually they can't move like that in space because there are no molecules so how does heat reach the earth from the sun through radiation radiation is the transfer of heat in the absence of molecules so now all uh, so even if there are no molecules radiation can take place if there are molecules radiation can still take place so the three important points you need to remember here all uh, i mean two important points which you need to remember here all bodies can radiate heat which means whether there are whether molecules are present or not all molecules all all objects can give out heat or Uh, can give out heat in the form of radiation and the second thing is transfer of heat through radiation can be in the presence or absence of a medium so whether there are molecules or whether there are no molecules radiation will take place you don't need molecules for radiation to happen so example heat coming uh, heat from the sun reaching us or cooling down of hot vessels so you can see in the picture the space between the sun and the earth is just Uh, space as in it is outer space there are no molecules over there so the rays of sunlight which have heat travel and reach the earth through radiation and in the other um, in the other example you can see that a person is trying to warm his hands by sitting in front of a fire so which means though there are molecules over there though there is air radiation is taking place and the heat is moving from the fire to the hands through radiation so as i told you all bodies can absorb that is taken or radiate that is give out heat so if you keep a uh, so all bodies can absorb which is taken heat or give out heat which is radiate heat so they can either become hot or they can become cold that is by absorbing heat or giving out heat that is absorbing or radiating heat 
so any body can become hot or cold it is possible dark colors in dark colored bodies absorb more heat and light colors in light colored things absorb lesser heat which means if you take a dark colored thing like a maybe a black paper and if you take white paper and you keep them in sunlight then you will see that the the black paper will become hot easily and the white paper will not become that hot why is that because dark colors and dark colored bodies or objects can absorb more heat so they can so the dark paper since it is black in color it can absorb a lot of heat very easily whereas the white paper it is very light in color it is a light color right so it will absorb lesser heat similarly dark colors and dark colored things radiate very little heat and light colors and light colored objects radiate a lot of heat so since dark colors are absorbing the heat adu odak thogothide so if you take dark paper and keep it in sunlight a uh, uh, that dark paper is absorbing heat so a uh, uh, heat anna the dark the dark paper is taking in adu odak thogothide so since it is taking it in it is obviously not going to let it go right adu since it is taking it in it's not going to give out the heat so that's why dark colors absorb more heat but radiate little heat so they take in a lot of heat but they don't want to give out the heat and same way and the same way light colors will take in very less heat so that's why they will give out a lot of heat so if a thing can absorb a lot of heat but radiate very little heat then it is a dark colored body if it if it can absorb very little heat and radiate a lot of heat then it is a light colored body this these are two points which you need to keep in mind this is very very important especially when it comes to radiation so absorb means taken radiate means give out these are two words you need to remember now dark colors absorb more heat radiate lesser heat light colors absorb lesser heat radiate more heat two things you need to keep in mind now uh, over here let's there's a summary of convection conduction and radiation so conduction as i told you is the transfer of heat from one substance to another through the molecules so here you can see that there is a pan which is kept uh, above fire so the handle which is red in color will become hot because the pan is becoming hot so the uh, so the heat will go from the molecules of the pan to the molecules of the handle then convection the transfer of heat through um, movement of the molecules so inside the pan you can see that there is some liquid so as i explained in the previous slide in one of the previous slides the molecules are going to move so one molecule is going to become hot since it is hot it is going to become light so it is going to become light so it is going to go on top so the heavier molecule will come down so the now the molecule at the bottom which is nearer to the heat is going to become hot it is going to go up and the cold molecules are going to come down because they are heavy so that is convection now radiation radiation is when um, heat is transferred in the absence of a medium or the presence of a medium so uh, here you can see the fire is radiating that is giving out heat to the atmosphere so these are very three a uh, very important points and very important concepts which you should keep in mind because you will need this in higher classes um now uh, let's talk about summer and winter so summer early we usually wear cotton clothes and winter in winter we usually wear woolen clothes but why do we wear woolen clothes so you can pause the video and think about it and um you can let me know so uh, why do why do we wear woolen clothes so here we have wool if you can see there is uh, this is red material red colored wool and actually if you zoom in and if you see properly there are these spaces between the threads of the wool so since there is space there is air correct there is air between the threads of the wool and as i told you earlier air is a is an insulator it is a bad conductor of heat or a poor conductor of heat which means it will not let heat to pass out or come in very easily so when we wear woolen clothes what will happen is since there are air pockets these holes are called air pockets since there is air in these uh, between the threads of the wool or between the threads of the sweater it is not going to let the heat from our body go to the uh, atmosphere so whenever it is cold outside 
it is not going to let that come near us. So our body temperature we, uh, is 98.6 degree Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. So the heat in our body will remain to our cells because of the air, because air is an insulator. It is not going to let heat escape to the atmosphere. So that's why we wear woolen clothes. Another interesting question now, you can pause the video and answer. I mean, think and answer and then you can check if the answer is correct. So now uh, it's time for the interesting question. So make sure you pause the video and think about the answer. And um, anyways, I'll be telling you the answer now. So you can cross check your answer. So the question is, if you keep both these pots in sunlight, which one will become hotter and which one will be comparatively less hot? So think about it. So if you see, if you observe, the, uh, the you should be able to uh, see the colors of these uh, two pans that is that is the most important thing you should be able to observe that very quickly so the uh, so one of the pots is black in color or dark in color and the other pot is very light or it is almost white or silverish in color so i told you in the previous in one of the previous slides again that dark colors absorb more heat they will become hot very fast and they will give out very less heat they will radiate very less heat Whereas light colors are going to absorb lesser heat and they will radiate more heat. Which means the dark colored pot, that is a black pot is going to become hot, very hot. And the white colored pot is going to become very, very less hot. As in it is going to become hot but not as much as the dark pot. So if you got this right, very good. You are thorough with the concept and I am happy you understood. And if not, you need to go through the video again. You need to pay more attention and you should be able to apply the concepts everywhere. So anyways, good luck. And now coming to the end of the chapter, uh, land breeze and sea breeze. So, um, okay. So then if you uh, go to a coastal region like Mangalore, you will observe that the, that it is not very, very hot over there. It is humid, but it is not very hot. Why is that? And how is that? So this happens, especially in coastal regions. This is one thing you should remember. So um, what happens is during the day, if you see the above pic the picture on the top, the, uh, because of the sunlight, the land becomes warm very fast and the sea will be cooler. I told you water is an insulator, water is a poor conductor of heat, which means it is not going to become hot very fast. So the land is going to become fa uh, hot faster because it is a solid. So uh, during the day, the land will become hot fast and the sea will remain cool because it is water and it is an insulator. So now the air above, uh, so that is because of radiation, land will become very hot first and the sea will remain cooler. Then because of convection, listen to what I'm saying very carefully. Because of convection, the air above the land is going to become very hot. But the air above the sea is going to be cool. So now what is going to happen is the hot air is going to rise up. I told you anything which is hot is light and it will start moving upwards. Anything which is cold is heavy and it will be a little down. So the hot air is going to move up. The hot air on land is going to move up into the sky. And now what will happen is the cold breeze from the sea is going to take the place of the warm air. And the warm air, the hot air is going to go above the sea. So now again, because of convection, the land is going to heat up the cold breeze. And the and uh, again because of convection, uh, the warm air is going to lose heat, and it will become cold because of the sea. So then the so basically there is cool breeze coming in from the sea. And the uh, land melina air that will become hot because of radiation. Hot is 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 the karana. Sorry, my bad. Uh, my Kannada is very uh, very good. So, but I'm still trying. So, um, since the land is hot, the air above the land, land made in air, adu tumma bisi ag bidate. So, bisi ag karana adu mail hogate, it will rise up. But on uh, the air on the sea, that will remain cold because the sea is not very hot. I told you that. Water is an insulator. So the air will, the hot air will move from the land to the sea and the cold breeze will go from the sea to the land. So since there is cold breeze, it is, it doesn't feel very hot. Okay. So now what will happen is when the cold breeze, so this will happen throughout the day. 
the cold breeze is going to come to the land it will become hot and it will go to the sea and the hot air on the sea will become cold and it will go back uh, and the and it will go back to the land as cold breeze so that is called sea breeze because it is the wind coming in from the sea to the land so that is called sea breeze but at night what will happen is since again uh, water is an insulator i told you so it is not going to allow heat to pass through it easily so it will not become hot very easily it will not cool down very easily so since water is an insulator at night sea is going to be warmer but land is a conductor it is going to be it is going to become hot easily it is going to become cold easily so at night what will happen is because uh, there is no sunlight the land will become cold very easily and the sea will remain a little hot because throughout the day there has been sunlight falling on the sea so the sea becomes warm slowly so what will happen is since the sea becomes cold uh, since the sea becomes hot throughout the day it is not cold at night it is warm but the land becomes very cold at night so what will happen is now there is hot uh, the sea is hot the land is cold so the air uh, above the sea and the sea mail in air that adu bisi agibidutte since it becomes hot it is going to become light it is going to rise up i told you hot anything which is hot is going to be light and it is going to rise up whereas the breeze over the land is very cold because there is no heat over there so now the hot air is going to move to the land the cold air from the land is going to move to the sea so now when the cold air uh, moves to the sea this uh, because of because the sea is hot the air is also going to become hot so a uh, bisi uh, bisi gaadi it is going to go, uh, rise up and is going to go to the land so from the earth and the uh, warm air which comes to the land that is going to cool down because there is not much heat so it will go back to the sea as cold air so now uh, so this is called land breeze so the in the above um, picture you can see sea breeze in the uh, uh, lower picture the second picture you can see land breeze so sea breeze and land breeze are two ex are extremely important applications of transfer of heat so uh, i'll summarize this again land become in, during the day land becomes hot due to radiation sea remains cool because water is an insulator so because of convection the air above land above the hot land rises and uh, since hot air is light it will move up and uh, when once it moves up the cold breeze from the sea will come to the land and the warm air will go to the sea now again the uh, uh, cold air on over land is going to become hot because of convection it will move up the warm air will, over the sea will become cooler and it will move back so that so that is a continuous cycle that is called sea breeze because the breeze moves from the sea to the land and this happens only during the day during night what will happen is land is going to be cooler because land is a conductor it will easily become hot or it will easily become cold water is an insulator which means it will take time to become hot it will and it will also take time to become cold so now at night the land uh, the uh, sea is warm because it has absorbed heat throughout the day it has taken in heat so the air above the sea is going to become warm it is going to become light so it will rise up and the uh, air above the land is going to remain cold so it is going to move towards the sea and the air from the sea is going to move towards the land so now the warm air will become cold and it will go back to the sea the cold air from the land will become warm when it is above the sea and it will go back to the land so this is called land breeze land breeze occurs only at night and it is when the breeze the cold breeze moves from land to the sea so um this is about the chapter heat i hope you enjoyed it and um, i hope you liked it and i hope i helped you understand this in a better way so we shall meet again for another chapter till then thank you and bye bye